I, I, so I am an institutionalist for, through and through. Um, and by what I mean by that is we're liturgical creatures. Whether we go to play poker once a month, go to the coffee shop once a week with friends, we have these liturgical structures that either help us confront life or help us avoid confronting life. So pop music generally helps you avoid confronting <laughs> life. And getting drunk generally helps you avoid confronting <laughs> life. Um, and, uh, you know, loud music at a nightclub might help do that. But the same liturgical technologies don't, if you listen to a singer songwriter, that like this music we're listening to tonight, it can help you touch a part of yourself that you could not otherwise have allowed yourself to touch. So you just, you just had a terrible breakup and you go and you listen to someone sing and you're listening to them and then you're able to face that. And instead of getting drunk and forgetting your problems, <laughs> you have a couple of tricks and you loosen up and you talk about your problems. And, um, you know, instead of going to a loud, loud pop music to forget, you're listening to a singer songwriter, you're in a little pub like this talking. That's a liturgy that helps you confront yourself. So for me, we need institutions like like those regular places we go. And that's what Icon is. The other thing is this is the strategy. Right? Is <laughs> if this is going to work, and I think we're in a lot of trouble in the world and want if this is going to work, doing one or two groups just will do nothing. Yeah. Having a few hundred people or a few thousand people does nothing. You need it's, you need a system. Let's imagine this crazy thing. Let's imagine that there is a system in place around the world where millions of peop, groups are meeting in once a week, sitting together in hundreds, doing some sort of ritualistic activities and preaching and songs, right? And that system is something they're part of, potentially their whole life, and they bring their kids to you and they'll <laughs> be empowered. And imagine that exists. And then imagine you could inject these <laughs> ideas into that system. Then, and, 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 it's, it, it, and the host takes it, right? The host doesn't reject it. It's very, very difficult, right? But if the host accepts these ideas, then you've already got a, a, a whole system. And that's, that's what power theology is trying to do. Infiltrate. Infiltrate, <laughs> yes. But being very honest about it. That's why it's not a secret, right? Being very honest. And, and going and literally saying, but it's also key, like the whole point of last night mm. was this death of God is not an anti-religious notion. It starts with St. Paul, like literally the notion of the death of God. And Nietzsche, which he knew, Nietzsche is the new St. Paul. Nietzsche is a reincarnation of the Apostle Paul, basically. <laughs> now, Nietzsche, it was one of his few mistakes, as he didn't see it. But, but he, for Nietzsche, the death of God was an event that everybody had to experience. Just like for the Apostle Paul, the death of God is an event that everyone has to go through. <laughs> Hegel said it. Nietzsche said it. And, um, and so it is connected. It's a theological position. It's a philosophical one as well, but it's a theological position. And I think the host can take it because because it's it's part of the narrative already it's just um the church is gnostic